This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. So I wanted to uh, reply or give an example of a question I got uh, in the comments. And uh, it has to do with options. And I'm going to focus in on uh, swing trading and how I would use it as a, as a uh, tool to replace a stock trade to reduce risk. So let me go ahead and get into this. Um, I, I obviously, like I say at the beginning of every one of these videos, um, this isn't necessarily a recommendation, but I did want, I've got the options up on the left, um, uh, the option chain, I should say. And uh, I've got the stock up, which is ADI. Now, ADI has uh, formed a pretty nice little breakout pattern on the monthly chart. You can see the confirmation on the weekly. It came back and tested. We've got really good momentum with a rising ADX here, and the ADX hit a strong level um, to the upside on the daily chart and is still holding 25. So I feel like I've got good momentum here. And then look at how this went sideways, had a little undercut. Now, ideally, when I'm doing options, I would prefer to do it here. Do you see how this was an undercut and rally pattern? This pattern, get this down, learn this pattern, especially when you have the bigger trends in your favor like this, you can play an option for a swing trade. And I would say if that's the case, then I'm probably only going to have an 11 days on these trades. Okay. Typically somewhere in that area, 11 to, well, it could be, depends on which options you're looking at. Um, but I would usually want to give it somewhere around a couple weeks to two to four weeks is, is generally what I'm going to use. Now, if I got in today here, then I probably want to give it a little bit more time to maybe potentially pull back a little bit before it goes. Now, I also would want to use the next resistance area as, as sort of like this target area for this. Now, that's that would be the 195. So if I'm looking at this today, and I'm looking at the 195s, I'm, I'm looking to pay 190. Now, here's the key. If I were going to do the stock, you figure out how much you're going to risk in the stock. So let's just say you have a $50,000 account, you risk 1%, you're going to risk $500 in a stock. And that means that you're going to put the stock number of shares on and wherever your stop is, you're going to figure out the you know how much that is. And then you're going to bet $500 on that trade. So you got to figure out how many shares you can buy to keep the risk at 500. When you do an option, you would basically say, so 185, if I do that, do two of those, you know, it, it's probably somewhere around two to three. Three might be a little bit more than that level. Um, uh, the other thing you could do in this instance, if you wanted to make it a little bit more equal, is you could do four of the 97 and a halves. Now, generally, I want to. What I want to do when I put on an option, I want to get a level where it'll be in the money by the time I'm exiting. It was out of the money when I buy it, and when I exit, it's in the money. So that's why I, I like the 195s here. But if you do the 197s and it goes to 195, these the 197s are still going to move really well. And in this case, you can get the, the risk down to be about the same. Now, it's definitive when you put on this trade where you put this on, you could lose all that money. Now, you don't have to lose it all. If you don't like the way this trades, and it breaks down or whatever, and there's some money left, you can exit, and then you don't lose the entire amount. That is different than if you own the stock, then you basically have to give it to the stop. So not necessarily, but most in most cases, that's what I would recommend. So what I like about it is if I put this trade on and, the, and something in the semiconductor area comes out and makes really bad news, and this thing opens up at 175, I'm still only losing $500 in the option. Okay, but if I put on the stock and my stop is here and it opens down here, I'm, I'm not getting my stop. I'm going to get the difference. I'm going to lose that extra difference. In a lot of cases, when you're doing these option trades, you end up risking a lot more. If you do it off the, I'm sorry, when you do these uh, swing trades, you, you end up risking a lot more um, using the hourly. So I, I wanted to make sure I covered this. Now, um, one of the things that I would recommend, as I talk about this undercut and rally, 
Okay. What I like to do, there's a couple of things I like to do. The entry time frame almost always want to have low ADX condition, meaning the ADX is below 25. If the ADX is above 25 and you've already kind of made a run, I don't really like doing the option there. I mean, I'm going to wait for a pullback. Now the option, the, the ADX could be strong, but I'm buying on a pullback at that point. I don't want to buy an option when the ADX is up and I'm, I'm extended. In this case, we're kind of breaking out here and ADX is still low. So it's a little early. I mean, I mean, I should say it's a, it's a little late in my view for an option trade, but it's still within the realm of being able to be done. Um, the other thing you could do is just wait for the next pullback and, and look for the next entry point off the hourly to make sure that you're kind of getting the timing right. The timing right is incredibly important in options. You don't have to be, you not only have to be right about the pick and in the management, but you also have to be right about the timing, okay? You can put this trade on in stock and let's just say you have a stop here based on the hourly or whatever. Um, and, and it can fiddle around in here for a couple of weeks and then eventually go hit your target you can't have that happen in an option. It's just the, the option's going to erode. And even if the stock ultimately makes a move to the upside, you'll only be making back some of your money. Because it's out of the money, you're going to be, this is, this premium is going to be dropping every day. And um, the other thing I would tell you is stay, be careful about putting these on on a Friday. If you put this on on a Friday, you, you got Saturday and Sunday and they will erode over the weekend. The option will. All right. Now, this is a Monday where I'm doing this. So, you know, this is not a bad situation. It's a little late. Like I say, if I get an undercut and rally pattern and I do it prior to the breakout, I'm getting a really I'm probably going to get a really good deal in the options. And I could even go maybe 11 days. That's a little aggressive. Probably like to have a little bit more like three weeks on these swing trades. And that that gives you plenty of time uh, to get in and get out. Um, the other thing you can do with these trades is if you risk 500, okay? Once you're up 500, you can get your money. You could you could literally um, take half off, just get just make sure you make a profit in it, and then go for a bigger win on the back half. Um, I'd probably only divide it in twos. I don't know that I would divide it in fourths or anything like that, but. Um, you can, those types of things can all be handled uh, based on your personality and what you're looking to accomplish. Um, but if you want to kind of reduce the risk in those trades, you can do that. The other thing you can do is, is uh, let's say you buy an option and you pay $1.50 for it. And it goes to $3. Well, you don't necessarily have to take it off. If everything looks good and it hasn't hit your target yet, you don't have to necessarily take it off. What you could do is just say, if it comes back to my entry point, I'm out. I'm going to go to, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get out of the trade. If, if I go back to where I entered on the option and that not, it might not be that the stock is going down. It might just not be going anywhere. And again, the premium could start to drop. So that's one way to handle them uh, from a trade management standpoint where you're risking less um, in that situation. So uh, those are just a couple ideas that I would recommend in terms of options. I wanted to discover this. I didn't want to go into all the details of the stock trade itself um, other than the fact that if you can find these low ADX patterns, undercut and rally patterns, you're going to be better off in the options when you're playing the uh, daily, hourly because a lot of times you'll get um, uh, the, the option is going to start to, once the stock starts to move, the premiums are going to go up. If the market is breaking out, you're, the premiums are going to go up. All, all that is already calculated into what's taking place. All right. Hope this helps. Go ahead and uh, post any questions or comments. Thanks.